Hey guys, Helen Hartsmith here from the Heart of the Witch's Path YouTube channel. It's been a minute, right? <laughs> um, I'm, yes, I'm filming from the car because I'm hoping that I can finish a, a video. <laughs> I can actually do a video. It's been so long since I've filmed anything that, um, I'm not even sure if I remember how to do it or not. <laughs> so bear with me as I kind of get my feet wet again and hopefully this video turns out <laughs> um, and is something that um, I'm okay to post or willing to post or whatever. Oh guys, I've missed this like, I just, I can't even put into words how much I've missed you guys and filming and and sharing and all of that kind of stuff so um i hope you've hung out with me and waited and you know whatever um so yay yay i hope you're well um i'm doing i'm doing okay um i'm trying to even remember like what my last video was so i guess i should probably start by explaining where the heck have i been so it's been just over a year now that I started a new job, a, a better job, a better for me job. Um, but this job has been a strain on my energy levels on, um, it's, it's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of work, but it's so good. Like I'm enjoy even a year later, I can honestly say that I still love this job. It's new things every day um, and things like that. So I do work in the world of manufacturing, um, but my job is a process engineer. And so I am working for a company that had no documentation in place. And so it's been my responsibility to establish all of that documentation, things like work instructions, you know, things like that. And so, um, my mind is constantly in a creative mode 10 hours a day. So I'm working a lot of hours too. So it's been leaving me, um, pretty exhausted. And that's, that has ate up my energy and time to be able to make videos and share with you guys. I was hoping that I would kind of acclimate a lot uh, quicker than I have, um, but that's okay. I would, like the first six months, I'm not kidding, I would come home every day and literally like sack out on the couch and like nap hardcore. And so things are getting a little bit better that way. And like I said, I've been missing you guys and making videos and stuff. So I'm trying to get back into it and see, see if I can, you know, find balance, and make it all work. So I, I've been, <laughs> that first video back is always like the hardest one. It seems like I remember filming my first video and it was the hardest thing to do. And so doing that, I'm hoping that by doing this first video, posting it, getting back into a swing, that it will become easier. So fingers crossed, um, maybe send me some, some energies to help me, uh, help me continue the creativity mode that I'm in all day. And, um, I just want to make good content for you guys. Like I don't want to I don't want to make crap that nobody wants to watch because that's not fun for anybody. So I was thinking about what I could talk about and I, it's interesting. I've been thinking about filming a video for a bit now and there's actually a channel that I watched quite often that went dormant and that is the Pagan Scholar. So hi, Pagan Scholar, um, if you ever see this, you're a bit of an inspiration I was already thinking about and wanting to do videos again, but seeing that he uh, posted a new video after like four years, I think it was. So at least my hiatus has not been four years. <laughs> um, but that was like an inspiration and 
um, he did a video on like his current library. And so I was like, oh, that's, that's interesting. Um, and then I also, another person that I would watch all the time that is a witchy content maker is Ember Honey Raven. And I saw that she's posted a video recently on um, the books that she's going to be reading in August. And so there seems to be like a book theme. And so I thought what I would do is I would talk about the books that I've been reading this year and, um, and kind of give, a a small, a small review on what I've read and, and go from there and see how, see how this goes basically. Right. So, um, I do use Goodreads and, um, there's a link or there will be a link in the description box to my Goodreads. So I use Goodreads to, um, kind of track the books that I want to read and what I have read, things like that. And a few years ago, they started a reading challenge. And so you, um, come up with the books, like a number of books that you want to read for the year. And it kind of helps you track and keep track of how, where you're at. And so, um, I started a few years ago and I started low and I've been steadily kind of working my way up every year. So I'm at 94%. I had said that I would read 35 books this year and I've completed 33. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. And so I'm kind of referring to my list here. Um, I'm going to mention, I'm looking at, so I try to read um, a balance of like new age slash witchy books and fiction. I try to, to do a balance. This year I've gotten a little out of whack. Um, I'm going to, for the most part, I'm going to keep this video to talking about the witchy books that I've read and like what I thought of them. Um, but I might mention some of the like supernatural fiction just to kind of reference. And if you want a more in-depth um, review of it, um, you can let me know, but I'll at least tell you if I think it's worthwhile to read. Okay. So, um, first off the bat is Wicca for one, Wicca for one, uh, the path of solitary witchcraft by, uh, Raymond Buckland. I have been a big advocate about reading the elders, like reading the witchcraft classics, if you will. Uh, I have a ton of Scott Cunningham last year. I think it was last year. I read Doreen Valiente. I'd like to get more into those elders. And so Raymond Buckland, of course, falls into that. So this is Wicca for one. This was like early in the year. This is like the second book that I finished. I gave it four stars. I think there was, if I remember correctly, there was good information in there and it was definitely worth the read. It was worth the time to read it. And honestly, I think I might have even listened to that one on audio. Um, so I kind of split my time between listening to audio books, reading physical books, and then I also use my tablet quite a bit too um, for reading. And it was very much worthwhile. So if you haven't read Buckland, um, I need, you know what I need to do? I need to read the big blue book because I haven't read that. Um, so yeah, check out Wicca for one. Okay. So I'm going to talk about a fiction book really quick. Um, and mostly because I gave it five stars and I think everybody should stop with their reading and go read this. Um, so white trash warlock by David R. Slayton. Um, it's the first book in the Adam Benton, I believe it is, series. This was fantastic. I gave it a five star. It is probably the best fiction story that I have read since like the Iron Druid Chronicles. Um, there's two books out. The second book is... Um, see, it's White Trash Warlock. 
trailer park something or something like that. And there's a third book that I think is coming out in the fall. So, um, it's on my short list to read the second book in this series. Um, it's got everything. It's got your, your magic. It's got your, uh, creatures. It's a good story. There's nothing contrite about it or, you know, it, it's, it's very original and I really, really liked it. So Faye, there's Faye in it. Um, so it was a very good book. I highly recommend. Oh, uh, let's see what's next here. I did a, between the end of last year and the beginning of this year, I did a reread of the Harry Potter series because it, th so that was my first time doing those on audio. I had only read each book once. And so, um, Kathy, y'all know Kathy, if you've watched videos here, Kathy always said you should, you know, do the audio version and do the Jim Dale version because those are the best ones. And so I did the audio. Um, so I recently have reread all of those and it was kind of interesting. Um, I didn't realize how often Harry, like people said Harry. And the good thing about that version is that Jim Dale does a great job of giving, um, the characters different voices. Ooh, but Harry can be super annoying after like seven books. It wasn't even seven books and I was kind of done with hearing Harry. So yeah, <laughs> that was the only drawback, but Jim Dale did a great job other than that. Um, next on the list is Magic for the Resistance um, by Michael M. Hughes. This was such a good book. There was... One thing that I, one gripe that I kind of have about a lot of books that I've been reading recently is that you get to a point where you always get to a section where it's like 101 material. Um, so that is unfortunate, but there's a lot, there's books on this list that there's just like a section of 101 material and they're specialized books. So like the, and I consider this specialized because this was, um, geared toward magic for, you know, social justice issues and things like that. Michael M. Hughes is actually the person who started the bind Trump Facebook group. Um, so he had in, initiated a lot of magic trying to stop like all the crazy crap that Trump was doing while he was in office. So, um, the book started off really strong. There's like that, a middle section where it got really one Oh one where they start talking about maybe correspondences or meditation practices or whatever. But then the the last bit of the book where he actually outlined a lot of spell work for specific purposes, that was definitely worth the read. Um, and, and honestly, there was, there was some spell work in there that was like no joke and, and using some pretty serious, um, intent and some pretty serious ingredients. And, um, yeah, I thought it was very much worth it. Um, and it actually got me thinking along with the new Aradia book that came out a couple of years ago. I think I did a review for it. Um, it really got me thinking about resistance magic. And so, um, I'm, I've been toying with an idea for a video on resistance magic. And so look for that. Um, because that's something that I'm actively working on. Um, and meanwhile, Magic for the Resistance, very much worthwhile the read. Absolutely. The next week of book that I read was To Walk a Pagan Path by Alaric Albertson. And the reason that I wanted to read this book because it, um, he was coming at it from an everyday practice. And the book was, the book was good. Um, Alaric Albertson is a Saxon. He is, he practices the Saxon tradition of witchcraft. So, um, he works with like those old, the older version of 
Odin, known as Woden. Um, he works with those level of gods from the Saxon era of, of history. And so, of course, this daily practice has that kind of a bend to it. And while I don't practice Saxon uh, witchcraft myself, um, I was hoping to just kind of glean. I always appreciate looking at daily practice information because I'm looking for inspiration in my own daily practice. And so a lot of Saxon flavor in the book, obviously, and a lot of Hellenistic flavor to the book. Um, he references, he, he, he's very close with someone who practices Hellenistic Wicca. Um, and there were, there was some Norse flavor in there and stuff like that. It was worthwhile. So if you're interested in Saxon witchcraft, then maybe anything by Alaric is something that you want to, um, check out. And by the way, I will make sure to link each of these books in the description box, um, so that you can go to Amazon if it's easiest for you to go to Amazon and purchase them. And of course, I always suggest that you, um, that you visit your local, uh, new age stores and purchase from them first. Help small business, right? <laughs> um, the next book that I wanted to talk about is Witchcraft for Healing, um, Radical Self Care for, of course, I can't quite read the, um, the, the secondary title, but it's by Patty, uh, Wigington. I was hoping that this book would be more than what it was. There seems to be quite a few self-care books out there. Um, and unfortunately they're all kind of, they're all kind of toting the same kind of messaging. So honestly, if you're, if you're interested in self-care, then, um, you know, I would say pick one and read it and, you know, you're probably going to get the same kind of messaging from, from any book. It was, it was worthwhile, but if you want a book on self-care, then I would almost suggest the Aaron Murphy, his cock, um, self-care book that, uh, again, I did a review on that. Um, that was a fantastic book. Um, Next on my list is Glamour Magic uh, by Deborah Castellano. Didn't do much for me. I only gave it two stars. Um, I think I think the biggest issue that I had was um, Deborah is definitely she her approach to magic is very different from mine. Um, I try to follow the Wiccan read. I don't necessarily think I'm a fluffy bunny about it, but I definitely try to be aware of my magical intent. And this, this book was all about glamour magic and using glamour to, to basically get what you want, which inherently there's nothing wrong with it, but some, like there were just some things, there were enough things about her approach that just rang um, as not the vibe that I want to work as far as magic goes. Now, somebody else might not have an issue with it. I don't think it was a bad book. There definitely was that 101 section of information in the middle, um, which is unfortunate because that book wasn't very, um, that book wasn't very long. It was about 200 pages you know, so it's unfortunate when they've got that, that middle section or whatever, but, um, if that, if glamour magic is something you're interested in, then maybe check it out and maybe you'd like it better than I did. I don't know. It was, it was an interesting enough read. I'm glad I, I don't, any of these books, I'm not, um, sorry that I read them. So if that says anything. Um, I, there's, here's another fiction book that I'd kind of like to bring up. Um, and that's Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman. Uh, this book is part of the Practical Magic series. Yes, I said 
series. So if you're familiar with the Practical Magic movie starring um, starring Sandra Bullock, Nicole Kidman, Stockard Channing, um, that is actually like the third book, like chronologically. So there's two books that come before Practical Magic that talk about earlier women in the family and magic lessons is one of those books and then there's a fourth book that takes place after practical magic i really enjoyed this book a lot um it really it, it kind of twists a little it twists away from some of the historical um family information that you get in the movie but it was really well written. Um, the characters were solid and they had a voice and they had things to say. And so um, I am I am really glad that I read it. And now I want to get the other book, uh, the other two. Well, I don't I haven't read technically Practical Magic. So I would like to read the others in the series as well. So check it out. Um, I also, oh, I got a book off my reading list, guys, that has been there for years. And I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't finish it. But it's the Norse Myths. It's the version done by Kevin Crossley Holland. And I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed his translation. Um, I think that he gave voice to the characters really well. Um, there's 32, I like how the book was set up too. So there's 32 myths in this particular book. And then there's a corresponding notes section it, towards the back of the book um, that kind of expands a little bit, you know, maybe on the book that the story was found in or what have you. Um, but his translation, I think, is favored amongst, uh, you know, students of Norse mythology. And honestly, the way that I ended up finishing it was um, I said, OK, I can finish this in a month if I read one myth a day. And that's how I finished it. You know, I just kind of took it that way. And I didn't necessarily read one every day. And some days I had to kind of make up for missing days. But I finally got it off my re reading list. And, and that in and of itself was enough. So I like his version. And I do like the Neil Gaiman um, version of Norse Myths as well. Oh, and speaking of translations, I think if you've been around for any amount of time, you know that I love Dr. Jackson Crawford. Um, he is an Old Norse specialist with his own channel on YouTube where he talks about um, translation and uh, and all, all things language related when it comes to Old Norse. He has a translation of the Poetic Edda that I read last year and did a did a video on, and I recently finished the saga of the Volsungs. Um, and it's a, it's a short book, but it's got all of the Volsungs stories, like all in one place. And so that, um, that was nice. It was nice to have everything that you kind of could read, um, consequentially, right? Sequentially. There you go. Um, and so um, I really liked that. That's It was under 200 pages. It was a very quick read. Um, so I did enjoy that. So those are the books. Those are the, the New Age slash metaphysical slash witchy books that I have read so far. I wanted to mention one more, and that's the book that I'm reading right now. And that is this book, The Art of Death Midwifery, An Introduction and Beginner's Guide by uh, Joellen St. Pierre. Um. I have been wanting to read um, and learn more about the art of death midwifery um, ever since I met Nora 
um, Cedar Win Young a number of years ago. And so I am, I'm more than halfway through this. Um, I am here. Um, it's a very interesting read thus far. Um, if you want me to do a full review of that book or anything else that I've mentioned in this video, then please let me know in the comments. Um, I think I'm going to wrap it up with that. Um, so if you have read any of these books and, that I've talked about in this video and have a differing opinion or liked it, I'd love to hear about it. Um, yeah, like how do I wrap up a video, you guys? It's been so long. Um, I guess I just want to say um, thank you if you've gotten this far uh, in the video. I appreciate it. Um, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button. I promise I am trying to get back in the swing of things and doing, uh, I would love to get back to a weekly video. We'll see how that goes. Um, send me some good vibes that I can make that happen. Um, and that's going to be it for now. Check out the links. Um, I have seen that there are a lot of people that are liking the Heart of the Witch's Path Facebook page recently. I see it. I know I have not been active at all really on Instagram or Facebook. I'm going to try to get back into that. Um, if there's things you want to see, let me know. I've got lots of new um, stone friends, so... If you would like to see them on, on the Instagram or the Facebook, then let me know and perhaps I can make that happen. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, if you've got an idea for a video that you would like for me to do, let me know. And if I know something about it, I'll give my opinion. How's that? So that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. And um, thanks for taking the path. Thanks for taking the time to walk the path with me. Until next time, blessed be.